Hi, this is Stan Lyle with Master Math. During the lesson, you're going to come to some You Try It slides where you're asked to do problems that relate to the lesson. Hit your pause button, try the problem, and then hit the forward key to move on to the answer. I hope you have a really good time today. Today we're going to work on graphing quadratic expressions. And before we're done, you're going to know what a quadratic function is, a function of the form y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. You're going to know what a parabola is. You're going to know what a parent function is, a vertex, and what's an axis of symmetry. This is the basic form of a quadratic expression. ax squared plus bx plus c. a and b are coefficients. c is a constant value. And then we've got x to the first power and an x squared. This x squared is the most important characteristic of a quadratic. A quadratic's going to have an x or a variable raised to the second power. But everything else can change. For instance, b could be equal to 0. And if b were equal to 0, we could just eliminate 0x's and rewrite this expression as ax squared plus c. That would still be a quadratic expression because we've got an x squared in it. But what if c were 0 and a were 1? Well, if c were 0 and a were 1, we could rewrite this expression as y equals x squared. And that's a quadratic expression, too. As a matter of fact, that's referred to as the parent quadratic function. y equals x squared. All the other quadratic functions are variations of this parent function, y equals x squared. Now, could we graph y equals x squared? Well, you've graphed functions in the past, and the first and easiest way to do it is to create a table. Just put a table and input some x values, and I inputted minus 7 to positive 7, and then output some y values, which is just the square of the x value. Now I could graph that, and if I did, it would look just like that. It graphs in kind of a U-shape. That U-shape we call a parabola. And all quadratics graph as parabolas. Now sometimes they're facing up. Sometimes they're facing down. Sometimes they're facing to the left. And sometimes they're facing to the right. But they're all parabolas. And that graph is the graph of the parent function. And all other quadratics, all other quadratic equations, when you graph them, are going to be variations of that parent function. Now there's a couple of other things I want you to understand about this graph. The first is there's an axis of symmetry. There's a line that runs right down the middle of the graph, and each side of that line is pretty much a mirror image. No, not pretty much. It's completely a mirror image of the other side. In this case, the axis of symmetry is the line x equals 0. It's the y-axis, where x equals 0. But it doesn't have to be. This could be slid over to the right or the left, and we'd have a different axis of symmetry. The other thing I want to point out is the vertex. The vertex is the extreme value. In this case, our vertex is 0, 0, an x value of 0 and a y value of 0. Now you can see that this graph goes up to infinity on both sides. So the highest y value would be infinity. But the minimum y value is going to be 0. Remember I told you sometimes the graphs are flipped upside down? Well, in that case, we wouldn't have a minimum value for the vertex. 
we'd have a maximum value. Let's see if you got it so far. Try these two questions. What's the vertex? What's the axis of symmetry? Hit the pause button, try the problem, and then hit your forward key to move on to my solution. I hope you found this easy. First question is what's the vertex? Well, the vertex is the extreme value. It's the, in this case, the high point of the graph. In this case, because the graph's facing downward, the vertex is going to be a maximum value. Now, what is that maximum y value? Well, our grid lines each represent four units because we run five units from 0 to minus 20. So the vertex is two units from the origin, so it's at 0 minus 8. And what's the axis of symmetry? Well, the axis of symmetry, again, is the line that runs right through the middle of the parabola. It's the line that the parabola mirrors itself around. And in this case, the axis of symmetry is the y-axis, or x equals 0. Well, here's the parent function, both the equation and the graph. And all other quadratic equations and graphs of quadratic equations are variations of what you see there. Here's an example. In the, in the, in the parent, the equation is y equals 1x squared. But what if the equation were y equals 3x squared? What if our a value was 3 instead of 1? How would it graph? Well, think about it. If I increase x by 1, then I'm multiplying that increase by 3 in y. An increase of 1 in x will result in a much bigger increase than 1 in y, which means when I go up 1 to the right on the x-axis, I'm going to go up more than 1 on the y-axis. I'm going to be stretched higher on the y-axis than I am on the x-axis. And so my graph is going to look like that. It's going to go up faster than the parent. It's going to be narrower than the parent graph. And we call that a vertical stretch. What if our function were y equals one-third x squared? Well, that's just the opposite. When x increases by 1, the effect on y is being reduced to one-third of that. So when I move along the x-axis 1, I won't move as much along the y-axis. I won't move up a complete uh, 1 on the y-axis. And consequently, my parabola is going to be wider. It's going to open up wider than the parent function. And we call that vertical shrink. Well, what would happen if instead of a parent function, y equals x squared, we had a, a modified parent function, y equals minus x squared? In other words, we'd be multiplying x squared by negative 1. What do you think that would do to our graph? Well, by multiplying the x squared values by negative 1, we're making y values that are negative. So hopefully it makes sense to you that instead of pointing upward, if our a value is negative, our graph is going to point downward. Now changes to a will have the same impact as before, except that the graph will continue to face downward. If our a value were 3 or minus 3, we're going to get vertical stretch and a narrower parabola. If our a value were minus one-third, we're going to get vertical shrink and a wider parabola. Here's our parent function again, y equals x squared. And the c value in this equation, you'll remember, is zero. 
well, what if our C value were 3? And we were asked to graph y equals x squared plus 3. Well, our A value didn't change, so we're not going to get narrower or wider. But for every value, our Y is going to be three places higher than in the parent function because we're adding three to the X squared. What do you think that would look like on a graph? Well, I hope it makes sense to you that it would look like this. The graph would just be pushed upward three units. And if that makes sense, this will make sense too. If our C value were minus 3, that would just drop the parent graph by 3 units. Let's summarize what we learned. We learned that by changing the A value and the C value, we can change the shape of the graph. Let's look at the changes in the A value. Now if a equals 1, then we have the parent function. We have a graph the shape of the parent function. But if a is larger than 1, then we have vertical stretch, and our graph is going to be narrower than the parent. If a is a fraction, if a is between 0 and 1, then we're going to have vertical shrink and our graph is going to be wider than the parent graph. And if A is less than 0, then the graph is going to open downward. It's going to reflect around the x-axis. How about changes in C? Well, they're kind of easy. If C is greater than 0, then our graph is going to slide upward. And if c is less than 0, if we're subtracting a value, then our graph is going to slide downward. Now you try this one. Hit the pause button, do the problem, and then hit the forward key to move on to the answer. We've learned what changes in the A coefficient and the C constant value will do to the graph of an equation. Now let's see if we can use that information to figure out which of these quadratic functions is represented by the graph. Let's look at the A values first. I've got an A value of minus 3, 1 8, and minus 3 again. Well our graph opens downward. And you'll recall that for the graph to open downward, we have to have a negative A value. So answer B couldn't be our answer. It could not be positive 1 8. Now let's look at our C values. Our C values are minus 6, plus 6, and plus 6. And we remember that our C values either slides the uh, function or the graph up or it slides the graph down along the y-axis. This graph has been slid down below the x-axis so we have to have a negative C value. So our answer has to be A. Y equals minus 3x squared minus 6. Try this one. Hit the pause button, try the problem, and then hit the forward key to move on to the answer. Well, let's see. We're supposed to figure out how the graphs would change between these two functions. Well, let's see how the functions change. The A value is the same in both. It's 3 fifths times x squared. But the C values have changed. In the first, it's minus 8. And in the second, it's positive 3. So our C value in the second equation has increased by 11 units. 3 is 11 greater than minus 8. Well, that means that the graph for the second equation 
instead of running eight units below the origin, runs three units above the origin along the y-axis. It'll be the same graph. It'll just be slid upward by 11 units. There's the original graph, and the vertex is at 0 minus 8. The second graph has a vertex of 0, positive 3. It's the same graph, it's just 11 units higher. Well, that's our first lesson on graphing quadratics. I hope you learned a lot. Now it's time to test your skills. Go to www.mastermath.info, and you'll find worksheets and quizzes there to help make sure you understand this concept. Well, I hope you do understand this concept. I hope you had a good time, and I hope we see you again real soon.